Good afternoon, ladies and gents. Simon Brown here doing today's webcast. Uh, so, ladies and gents, we're looking today uh, probably about a, a fairly short webcast, 15 minutes, maybe 20, time for questions. And we're focusing on, okay, so we want to create wealth. I mean, we get that. And, you know, if you've got 10, 20, 50, 100,000, a million, whatever, it's easier to do. But if you haven't, it becomes it becomes more well, more complicated. You've got to be a little more nuanced in where you go for a simple reason, costs. You can go to any broker. You can buy a single share at 100 bucks, no problem, but those costs are going to kill you. So what we're looking at today is, is how can we do smaller amounts without worrying about the potential cost implications? The first slide I've got here is just, I suppose, the why. I'm not going to delve too much into the why, but this is our, our equity market uh, going back to uh, 1996. You can see a bit of sideways at the beginning. You can see the emerging market crisis in 98. You can see the, the, the dot-com uh, collapse in 2002 with the rally that started in 03, emerging market crisis in 2008 and 9, uh, and then the rally post thereafter after we bottomed in March 2009 to where we are as of close yesterday, uh, at pretty much all-time highs for our market. So this basically is the investment case. You want to create wealth. Where's the best place to do it? Simply, a stock market. Equities over the long term are the best performing asset class. And when I talk long term, I'm talking decades. You know, over the next week, month, year, three years, even five years, who knows what will be the best performing asset class? We've certainly seen property doing well. At times, it's been gold. It's been commodities. Heck, at times it's money in the bank, but over time it's about the equities. And I mentioned costs, and this isn't directly relevant, but it still is because costs are so critically important. So this is an infographic from just one lap, and just looking at three investments, uh, each of them at a thousand rand, growing at fifteen percent a year, but with an annual fee. And the top line is zero annual fee, uh, it comes out at sixteen thousand three hundred and sixty-six. A two percent per year fee is ten thousand nine hundred and twenty-six and a 5% uh, fee per year, 5,867. A huge difference, almost a ten, uh, more than a 10,000 difference between the zero and the 5%. So we've got to keep those fees down. And it's, it's easier with large amounts. It's significantly harder with small amounts of cash. And, and that's what we're focusing on today. And here we're looking at, at annual fees rather than upfront fees. But nonetheless, if you invest 100 Rand and you've got a 10% upfront fee, you actually only invest at 90 Rand. And your first 11% growth, frankly, just gets you to where you started. Whereas if you invest 100 Rand and you've got a 1% fee, well, after 11% growth, you're at, you're at 110. You're making money. So it's about keeping those fees down and, and places that, that help you with those fees. So as I say, easy with a pile of money, harder with small piles. And, and, and there are a lot of costs involved here. Um, there's brokerage fees. That's money that goes to the stockbroker from that. They pay JSC fees. From that, they've also got a, 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 to run their business, to make a profit from their business and the like. They're straight, which is electronic settlement of shares, uh, 10 Rand 58. And that's the same across whichever broker that you potentially go to. There's security transfer tax, that's 0.25% when you buy. That's not on exchange traded funds. And then there's investor protection levy, which is suitably small, uh, 0.00002%. So very, very small and, and not really a massive fee. You're going to fund the straight, the STT and the IPL is the same across all the different brokers. And then, of course, there's VAT as well on straight and brokerage. The brokerage is where it matters. And the trick is you'll find brokers out there. You've got great rates, 0 0.04, 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7% of the value of the transaction, but they have a minimum. And it's that minimum that hurts. So they might have a 0.6, but a 100 Rand minimum, which means you do a 1,000 Rand transaction, 0.6 is technically six bucks, but you pay that minimum of 100 Rand plus fat. And again, if you're doing a 100 Rand trade, straight to 11.58. So that's that's 11.5% just on straight. And there's VAT on top of that because um, that's a fixed fee. So it really is. And the straight issue we can't get away from, and we will touch on that. But the brokerage, certainly we've got to get away from either the minimums or find places where the minimums are very small. You want to try and get those costs below 2% per transaction. Ideally, you want to get those costs below 1% per transaction. That's really what you're aiming for. So it's those minimum fees that hurt. It's also admin fees. 
Now, most brokers will charge an admin fee. There will be a fee simply for having an account. And even the ETF uh, issuers, what they do is they do a, a percentage of the holding. So at ETFSA, 0.7% scaling down. When you hit a, a million, I think it's 0.2%. Uh, the individual brokers will charge you 70 bucks a, a month. Some will charge you 465 a year. Again, that's fine if you've got tens of thousands. But if you want to go and do a small little transaction and assume you can get past the minimum fees, which is hard to do, but assume you can, then you've got the admin fees. You know, and if you're paying 500 bucks a year and you've got a, even on a 10,000 Rand portfolio, that's 5% per year that you're paying just an admin fees and uh, there's your 5% a year and how that hurts. So it's not a, a transaction fee, but it's an admin fee. So you, those admin fees are also something that we need to to, to watch out for and, and manage and, and, and get rid of in the process. And you know, if they're there, how much are they? Some places, admin fee, 10 bucks. You know, 10 bucks a month. Okay, that's if, if you've got a, again, if you've got a thousand rand portfolio, 10 bucks a month is 120 rand a year. Yep, 12%. That is hurting. Now, really, we're talking, you know, small amounts of money at the margins here. You know, you look at 10 bucks a month. Man, that's not even a, a cappuccino from, from you know, uh, Origin Coffee or something like that. It, it, it's tiny. But, but look at it in the big picture of your portfolio. And, you know, five years ago, this webcast wouldn't have been possible. It would have been simply a case of, sorry, guys, you're going to pay the fees. You know, you're better off to at least be investing even if you're paying higher fees. And that's true. Rather invest and take the higher fee. But these days, we really can find a situation where we can invest without the high fees, without the high admin fees, and yeah, then we, we're better off. We, we've got, instead of that, 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 whatever it is, whatever the amount is going towards the, 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 the stockbroker or whoever is administering, it goes directly to you. It goes into your investment. It compounds into your future. In a sense, Fees compound out of your future and that, well, they start to disappear. You, know, you don't have it and they're, they're fading away on you. So looking at monthly debit versus lump sum, um, monthly debit orders, I mean, a lot of the stockbrokers don't do them. But for, in most stockbrokers, I mean, if I'm thinking of the, the cheapest stockbroker out there, traditional sort of stockbroker, DIY stockbroker, to, to really hit the, the sweet spot, you've got to do a 14,000 Rand trade, up to, in some cases, as much as 30,000. So you can get away with you know, maybe five or six at some brokers, and you're paying around 1.8 or 2% per transaction. That's, that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, but that that's a big monthly debit. In truth, it's a big lump sum for many as well. What I'm saying here is, you know, can we get away from you know, 300 bucks a month? Maybe even a little bit less. Maybe 500. Maybe you've got a, a thousand rand. You you got a bonus. You paid some debt. You you uh, uh, spent some money. Went on a weekend away or a dinner or something. And then you've got a, a thousand or two thousand left over that you want to invest. So how do you do that with those smaller amounts of, 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 of money? The, the industry, and again, if we go back in time, I mean, in the late 80s, I remember a stockbroker saying uh, that he wanted a 20,000 Rand to open an account. That was in 1987. 20,000 Rand was a humongous amount of cash. Notwithstanding, I was still in matric. So, I mean, I, I think I'd you know, saved together. I think I had a couple of hundred, 450 bucks. He wanted 20,000. You can open an account with any amount. You can buy a single share. You could go and buy a single MoneyWeb share at 35 cents, but your fees are going to kill you. And there's no way you can buy a single th MoneyWeb share at 35 cents without getting killed by fees. You, you've got to make your transaction sizes. To me, because of that straight, which is fixed at, at around at, at the 11.58, um, you know, the ideal to me really is about a 500 rand transaction. We can push it down to around about the 300. If you've got 100 bucks, my advice is, buy something every three months. Uh, so save your 100 bucks, three months, you've got 300, go and buy something. Rinse and repeat, over the course of the year, you've put in 1,200 Rand, you've done four transactions of 300 Rand each because it's that, that fixed minimum amount of the 11.58 for straight. So most of them, as I say, are wanting 500 to 1,000. Uh, there's some with no limits, there's some 300 Rand limits, we'll talk about those as well.
So here is the list. There are hundreds of stockbrokers. So I went and said, okay, which ones are offering something which is really applicable for a small single transaction or for a monthly debit or for a small uh, 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 single one-off transaction? So, and, and these are, are, are just literally in, in order that I, that I searched for them. So no particular order. I run through them all and we'll come back. One of them jumps out and bites you on the nose. So standard online share trading, if you do a TFSA account, a tax-free savings account, okay, that's critically important. It's not the general standard online share trading. You open the account and you say, I want a tax-free savings account. Um, and there you can buy limited ETFs. There's a, a list of uh, 38 ETFs that you can buy. And transaction fees are very small. Um, that list of ETFs that fit into the TFSA, you can find at blog.justonelap.com. Uh, you can't buy shares in a TFSA account. Now, you could in a normal standard bank account, but it's the price issue, and there is an admin fee. So if you're just wanting the TFSA account, which is the cheap account, you can do small transactions for very, very cheap but you're going to get hurt by that admin fee. And on the TFSA account, what you'll find is that straight has discounted the straight fee by some 70%. So instead of 11 rand and change, it is three rand and change. So that really does work. It's a great option. It's nice. It's cheap. It's excellent. Admin fee starts to hurt at 70 bucks a month. And that's the pain and suffering there. So then there's standard uh, auto share invest. This sits within uh, internet banking at Standard Bank. So you've got to have a Standard Bank current account. And you've got to have internet banking. If you do, it's well worth looking at. You can go to ETFs. It's, uh, you can do ETFs and shares. Limited ETFs, limited shares. There is an admin fee. So there's two auto share invests from Standard Bank. There's the vanilla product and then there's the tax-free savings product. Tax-free savings account, obviously you can't buy the shares. You can only buy the ETFs. And that's as per legislation. But it's it's cheap. It, it's very cheap. The auto share invest vanilla you can do from 500 rand per month. You can buy individual shares and you can buy ETFs. And again, it's limited on both sides. There's an inactivity fee cost to 25 rand every two months. And it's 0.25% plus taxes. So there's no minimums. So if you've got an online share, if you've got a standard bank account, this is certainly a, a, great, a great offering. Um, and if you go and do it in the TFSA, tax-free savings account, it's cheaper still. Of course, there you can't do any shares at all. Easy equities uh, done by the Purple Capital Group uh, came to market last year. Um, in the essence, a full-service broker. So ETFs, shares, all of them available. Uh, no admin fee, no minimum fee. So they charge brokerage at 0.25%, which is a very, very good rate, and there's no minimum. So you go and do a, a, a 10 Rand trade and you're going to pay 0.25% on a 10 Rand trade, uh, which is, I'm trying to do the math, it's two and a half cents. Of course, straight will kill you, 11 Rand 58. So, you know, even there, yes, you could do a 100 Rand trade, but that 100 Rand trade is going to cost you about 14 bucks, of which, you know, 13 and most of it is the straight. So 100 bucks is going to cost you 14 bucks. That's 14%. So again, I'm going to say to you, Easy Equities, it's a great offering, and that no admin fee is hugely attractive. And there's no bells and whistles at Easy Equities. You know, the standard online share trading, more bells and whistles than you than you know what to do with. But if you're going to go and buy one ETF, BBET40, which is my preferred, or DBX. WD if you want the, the, the more direct international exposure. Um, you don't need all the bells and whistles coming from Standard Bank. But at Easy Equities, I still say that really you want to be doing three to 500 Rand per transaction. Uh, at, at, at a 500 Rand transaction, your 11 Rand 58 plus VAT on straight uh, is suddenly a little over 2%. So that, that's not too bad. At, 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 uh, at, at 300, it's a little over 4%. And then that's starting to hurt on your upfront. But certainly uh, a great offering, and that admin fee certainly does help. ETFSA.co.za, uh, um, so you can buy ETFs across all ETFs and ETNs. No shares are available, um, and you can. Uh, there is an admin fee. And they've got the same billing process as the ETF issuers. So if you wanted to buy a Grinrod product or a Satrix product, um, you, would, you would be able to go directly to Satrix or directly to Grinrod, but then you could only buy their ETFs. Whereas at ETFSA, you can buy any of the ETFs that are available in the market. So they only obviously offer ETFs and ETNs, no shares, and there is an admin fee. What they do on the, the billing side is they, they do monthly debits starting from 300 Rand, and they do lump sums from 1,000 Rand. 
uh, cost of transaction, 0.1%, plus plus three rand fifty. So the cheapest offering. There's no cheaper offering out there in terms of the transaction size, without a shadow of a doubt. Your trick is, is your admin fee. So your admin fee starts to add up. Now it's 0.7%, and, and, and you know that's relatively small in truth, and as a percentage term, it's quite small. But you know, when you've got you know, a million rand, okay, that's going to take some time, and then they're only going to charge you 0.2%, but uh, that, that's 2,000 rand per year that you're paying. Now, it's convenient. It's nice. I'm certainly not knocking them. I think they, they're up there with the best. I'll come to my preferred in a second. Uh, FNB offer two options. They've got the share saver, which is basically their two ETFs, one in the top 40, one on the mid cap. So it's just those two ETFs, um, no shares available, and there is an admin fee associated with it. Admin fee small, costs are small. Um, it, it's the product range that is that is very limited, but it's, you know, it's basically giving you exposure to the top 100 companies in South Africa. And that, that that's a great place to be investing. No problems with that. Uh, FNB share builder, um, very much like the auto share invest. So there is an admin fee, a limited range of ETFs and a limited range of shares, more limited than the standard bank auto share invest. Uh, folks, if you've got questions, pop them in, the couple coming through. <clears throat> Yeah, Johan, uh, you're 100% right. Easy equities, you're getting killed on 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 straight. And uh, is this legal? Yeah, afraid it is. It is a requirement of the JSC. Personally, I think straight is vastly overpriced. Um, but you know, th there's nothing we can do about it. It it is it is what it is. And you know, if you're if you're buying a million bucks of shares straight, 13.58, it's nothing. Buying 100 bucks of shares, 13.58 is well, 13.58 percent. So you know, it, it that that is that is the the, the issue with straight, and, and that's easy equities. Yes, you can. There's no minimums on on terms of transaction size. Yes, there's no minimums in terms of of um of of the brokerage. It's 0.25 percent, no minimum. Hugely attractive. Straight hurts, and no admin fee, but straight hurts. So. Of the list, and, and this really is it. I mean, I, you know, someone, a question coming from Charmaine, what about Unitrust? Yep, not looking at Unitrust. Beyond my expertise, I, I got issues with Unitrusts. I prefer exchange traded funds by a long way. To me, it's a fairly simple issue. Um, if you're at Standard Bank, Auto Share Invest is a really, really great product and well worth investigating. And if you're starting, I'm going to say go and do the tax free savings account offering. Uh, if you want to know more about it, go to justonelap.com. You'll find the videos, you'll find the infographics. So really, if you if you if you're at if you have a standard bank bank account and you've got internet banking, Auto Share Invest is brilliant. If you haven't, uh, then to me it's between Easy Equities and ETFSA. If you're only looking for ETFs and you want to do relatively small amounts, 300 bucks, so there's around uh, ETFSA is going to be markedly cheaper. That admin fee will start to hurt. But you know what? When you're paying 2,000 rand a year in admin fee. You've got a million rand portfolio, then you can make a plan. But when you've only got a thousand rand portfolio, at least you're paying 0 0.7, but it's not killing you. So to my mind, if you're looking for ETFs only, uh, ETFSA, um, and then you can go and do lump sum and or debit orders. If you're looking for equities, uh, to me, it's easy equities without a shadow of a doubt. Um, the auto share, again, if you haven't got a standard bank account because of the, 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 the pricing model there, their pricing is the same. 0.25%. Admin fee uh, is, 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 is small enough. That doesn't bother me. The range is a little more limited. So perhaps if you're wanting to go and buy shares that are not available um, on standard auto share invest, then it's easy equities. But to my mind, it's going to be one of those three, which is your, your best offering in that place. The standard one, obviously limited to people with a standard bank account, easy equities and ETFSA. Uh, someone's saying, how do we find them? So the standard bank one, obviously internet banking, easyequities.coza, uh, ETFSA.coza as well. So those really are your three options. And as I said earlier, five years ago, we couldn't do this. Now we really can, and, and, and it's a big deal for us. I mean, it really is a big deal. Um, it, it, it's fine if you've got some money and you've got 20,000 stashed away you want to buy something with, but really wealth creation is about starting with that first step, starting with that first couple of hundred rand that you've managed to save. Uh, and, and these are the guys who really, really help us in that space. Uh, Luke, can one do a TFSA account in standard ASI? Yes, you can. So you can do a tax-free savings account. The costs are even lower um, simply because uh, of the straight deal. Straight has discounted their rate at 70% for TFSA accounts, and the monthly admin fee is, is 10 rand 
per month. So you can do a tax-free savings account with an auto share invest. Uh, question, which way, route did I go from old? So I was betwixt and between. I've got an OST and an ASI. In the end, I went with OST. I decided that was probably, you know, I'm already there. It gives me a, a, a slightly better level of control that I buy live and, and the like. It means that, you know, I can, I, I like it all within one place. I do have a, a vanilla traditional auto share invest, but uh, I went with the, the OST route. Uh, my preferred ETF, so as I mentioned, my preferred ETF is uh, BBET40. Um, if you go to blog.justonelap.com, you'll find a podcast to search for Narina Fisser. Um, and you will find a podcast we did with her where we built a model ETF portfolio, um, starting with BBET40 and adding on, on top of that. Uh, who else is offering tax-free savings accounts? ETFSA, as far as I could see, isn't yet, but I can't imagine it's not in the works. Sorry, Easy Equities. Um, ETFSA uh, has one, but they've got two baskets that you buy. You can't select your ETFs. You buy two baskets. I've got a an issue with the one basket. I need to chat to Narina Fisser. She's not around this week. I will find out about that and then I will talk and write about it. Um, the F&B uh, share saver you can also do within a tax-free savings account. Philip, what are my views? Costwise and S&B Securities are a platform for ETFs and shares. Um, it, it, it's it's cheap. I mean, make no mistake, it's it, it's well priced. It's nice and cheap. Yes, they're admin fees. Uh, yes, they're limited. So it depends if you want to go. They've basically got uh, uh, three products: share builder, share uh, saver, and then their investor product. Um, the investor product being the the full service offering. I got no problem with the fees whatsoever. Andre. Uh, Yeah, sorry, Andre, I'm not understanding your question. Throw it back to me. I, that didn't make sense to me. Daphne, um, what is my opinion on starting a TFSA account at the age of 65? Sure. I mean, two things. The traditional view says 65, you're far too old. Um, nonsense. I mean, you, 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 this day, if you're 65, you're probably going to live to 90. You might even live to be 100. So at the moment, because of the structure of the TFSA accounts, it's going to take you know, 17 years to get your full allotment in. Um, that takes you up to 83. Uh, my mother-in-law is 83. She's fit and healthy and driving around the streets of Joburg. We could argue maybe she shouldn't be driving in the streets of Joburg, but, you know, she is. Um, so, you know, short answer, uh, and I, am I starting one for my mother-in-law at the age of 83? I am. Um, will she get the full benefit of it? Well, she'd have to live to be 100. Um, that's not inconceivable. I mean, 100 is old, but but we're living a heck lot longer. So definitely 65, I'll start it anyway. You know what the tax-free savings account is doing? Every year, our Minister of Finance, this past year was Minister Nene, stands up and takes money away from us. Petrol price increases, sin tax increases, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This year, he gave us some money back in forms of TFSA accounts. My view, we need to go and grab it. Um, Diane, I didn't put uh, FMB securities on it because of the minimums, the cost structures. So I've got no what I call uh, uh, vanilla um, uh, uh, stockbrokers here um, because of the cost structures in, in involved. So no PSGs, no, I mean, standard online share trading, but only for their TFSA account. Um, and frankly, if you're doing it only for the TFSA, the numbers don't make sense to my mind. Um, so none of the others were there at all. AfriFocus, uh, uh, Vinani, et cetera, et cetera. And simply for, for two reasons. <clears throat> The, the monthly admin fees, and we've got some monthly admin fees here, but they're much lower. The other issue is because of the minimum of brokerage. So they will say brokerage is 60 rand or 70, sorry, 0.6% or 75 rand. So you do a thousand rand transaction, uh, your brokerage is technically six bucks, but they charge you the minimum, 75 bucks. Therefore, you pay seven and a half percent plus VAT on that brokerage as well. So no other reason. That's why it's not there. Kevin, what about opening a TFSA Direct with Satrix? Sure, you can open a TFSA Direct with Satrix. Uh, they've got a, all of their ETF products and a whole bunch because they're owned by Sunlum. They've got a lot of unit trust products in there as well. My only issue is that my, my favorite three ETFs are not Satrix product. And they are respectively uh, BBET40. I'll drop these into the chat, guys. because uh, uh, So it is uh, BBET40. It is uh, DBXWD, which is a global uh, fund currently predominantly US, 57%, about 11% uh, UK, Europe, and uh, Japan, and then the rest of the world. And then my third one is PTX. 
uh, PTX10, which is an equal weight property fund. So, Kevin, that, that that's simply my issue is that if I if I do it that route, and there's nothing wrong with it, is that I'm limited to what ETFs I can buy. It needs to be Satrix ones, and none of my preferred three are a Satrix ETF. So if I go to ETF SA, Easy Equities, uh, or any of the others, I get that border basket. Uh, Gordon, I'm a Standard Bank customer. What is the core difference between OST and ASI, preferable for 1,500 a month debit order into an ETF? So simple answer. OST is the online DIY of full service bells and whistles. Training courses, you can buy shares, et cetera, et cetera. Um, auto share investors, the strip down, just the own ability to transact. If you want to do a 1,500 month debit order, ASI is definitely your better option than online share trading in terms of cost structures, in terms of everything else. Almost certainly, if you're looking for an ETF, you will find that ETF available with an ASI. Um, and, and my advice would be to do a, 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 a tax-free a TFSA account. So you do that within internet banking. You do your five, five, ugh, try that again. You do your thousand five hundred per month low fee, ten rand a month admin. So to me, it's ASI is the easy answer for that one. Stefan, best income ETF. So we don't have really excellent income ETFs. We've got the property ones, Prop Tracks ten. We've got the um, the the Pref share one from Grinrod, but you get no capital appreciation. Um, the bond ones are uh, no, they're not terribly exciting at the moment. We've got Satrix Divi, which is a bit of a low the yield's not bad, about three and a half. Uh, and then we've got the 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 uh, dividend aristocrats also from Grinrod. None of them offering crazy dividend yields. I mean, you might get that dividend yield up to five, five and a half, but that's about as far as it goes in that space. Prayer, you're looking at total expense ratio. Which of the above options is cost effective? If one needs to contribute 2,000 monthly, for example. Uh, best options, ETFs or, uh, of TFSA or shares via a platform like standard online share trading. So a total expense ratio is theoretically the internal cost of running a, a, a collective investment scheme, be it an exchange-traded fund, exchange-traded note, or uh, a unit trust. Um, it's gonna, that, that, that total expense ratio will be the same across. For your 2,000 random month your your best options and if you're wanting to do it in a uh, TFS, TFSA account your best options currently one of the standard bank op options or the ETFSA as I said easy equities will have an option up soon enough if you're just looking for vanilla ETFs uh, at 2000 a month you should be looking probably at uh, either the ASI um, the share builder from uh, FNB uh, easy equities or ETFSA Ladies and gents, I'm hitting my half hour. I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. So the point being is, you know, as I said right up front, we're not doing the debate about whether you should or shouldn't. Um, it really is going to be a case of if, you, if you're if within Standard Bank and you're banking there already, look at their ASI and their tax-free savings account within internet banking. Um, if you're not, look at Easy Equities and ETFSA um, and, and to take those as your as your best op option. Uh, Gordon, ETF, 1,500 into one ETF or a few. Short version, Gordon, I would probably do it into three. I would do 500 into each one of those three I just put out there, um, which is the BBET40, which is local, uh, DBXWD, which is international, and PropTrax10, which is also local, but gives you property and gives you a different sort of asset class. So I would do 500 into three. Um, Luke, 30K per annum for TFSA. Is it per tax year or elapsed year? It's per tax year. So it's one March to 28, 29 Feb. So the point is to start investing. I mean, that, that's an absolute no-brainer. You know? and, and there's a, a, an infographic out there circling on the, the Twitters that I did a while ago. Uh, quite simply, spend less than you earn, save the difference, um, and start investing it. ETS, BBET40 is my preferred. Um, the other two are that, that. That's my first step. And then the DBX, WD, and PTX, TEN. Monthly debits, lump sum, and as and when you have that lump sum, um, but I, I I do a monthly debit every month into 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 uh, uh, I happen to use AutoShare Invest. The platform's not important, um, and I go and buy five grand of ETFs every single month, just stock standard. That's what I'm doing. Um, look at the tax-free savings account. They're a great initiative. They're only been around exactly a month today. Uh, go have a look at them. There's a lot of stuff in just one lap around them. Just do a search on there. Uh, if you're looking to buy ETFs, they your first uh, 30,000 a year and 500,000 in a lifetime should certainly go into a tax-free savings account.
Um, and look at the ETFs. They, they, they are great. I mean, that's what I've been talking about. You know, a couple of those options, and if we go back there, um, equity, you know, the shares are you know, Easy Equities offers full share list. ASI offers limited, uh, share builder offers limited. I haven't really touched on the shares in this presentation. I'm typically saying if you're starting a small uh, portfolio, you should probably be focusing on ETFs, and there are some uh, webcasts around that as well. Ladies and gents, I'm not seeing any more questions coming through. We will park it there for today. Uh, thanks very much for your time. All the best. Um, a question coming through, prayer. Which broker offers more options on what you could potentially buy? So it's your full services. It's your easy equities. It's your standard online share trading. Um, it, it is the, the PSGs and all the rest. Those really are the ones that are going to give you your, 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 your widest range. And in some cases, they also offer derivatives and the like. Uh, Luke, my absolute pleasure. Daphne, Andre, uh, everyone else, my absolute pleasure. Uh, when will the video be up? It will be up by lunchtime tomorrow, that being uh, Thursday. Yeah, Thursday 2nd. William, uh, my pleasure. Ladies and gents, all the best. Cheers.